Tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Amanda. I'm a palliative care doctor who has worked in New Zealand for many years, looking after people with advanced illness. I would like to give you some information about the End of Life Choice Act and some of the implications for doctors. I am one of many concerned individuals who are worried about the risks of a law change. What is this referendum all about? What does the Act actually say and what are some of the concerns? The election is now in October. We are voting for a candidate, a party, whether or not we support the Cannabis Bill and the End of Life Choice Act. The question on the voting paper will ask you if you support this Act coming into force. Remember the vote is not just for better end of life care, nor is it asking you if you agree with the idea of euthanasia and assisted suicide. The government is asking you if you support this law. It is a finished piece of legislation, and this is the first time in New Zealand's history that we've had an act come to a referendum. No groups have had input into the writing of the act, including doctors, Māori, Pacifica, people with disabilities. This is of great concern and speaks to the lack of safeguards in the Act. If the majority of voters support it, it will come into law 12 months after the date of the official referendum result and assisted suicide and euthanasia will be allowed. The majority of the safeguards are within the criteria. Most of the criteria will be directly policed by doctors. The first one is simple enough you have to be a permanent resident or New Zealand citizen. The next one is about age. You must be 18 years and over. This act will be available for those 18 to 108 and not just the elderly. The person must be in an advanced state of irreversible decline in physical capability. That term irreversible is not always easy to judge by doctors. I have had patients sent to me as palliative or end of life who have been physically declining, but with good care have improved unexpectedly. The next criteria is that the person must be experiencing unbearable suffering. This is subjective. No one can tell you that you are not suffering. Therefore, this does not work as a criteria at all. The last one is about competence and being informed. Doctors find it hard to test for competence and people will have variable amounts of information about their choices. There will be no standard and therefore this is a poor safeguard. There are some major concerns with this act. The poor safeguards place vulnerable people at risk from the pressure of others. Well, people cannot imagine being sick they judge others, particularly around quality of life and what it must be like to be unwell. Instead of supporting and caring, relatives and friends can unwittingly make people feel guilty for still being alive. It is very difficult for doctors to detect coercion and even harder to do something about it. The other scary part of this act is the lack of a stand down period. People can request euthanasia the administration of a lethal drug by a doctor, or assisted suicide, the prescription of a lethal drug to be taken by the person themselves, and be dead within 72 hours. The family does not need to be notified. The Act, when you read it, does not make logical sense. It is also extremely hard for doctors to be accurate about how long someone has to live. Under this act, there will be wrongful deaths. Laws exist to protect the vulnerable, not the well-educated, strong-minded person who likes to be in control. Most New Zealanders die well. The majority have little or no pain at the end of life. There are specialized teams of people around the country who are there to help people have a dignified and compassionate death. Many people are voting for this act with their hearts after seeing a loved one die badly. This is completely understandable, but this act will not improve bad deaths. The solution is more investment in training and better end of life care 
including palliative and hospice services. Remember, it is already legal to turn off life support or to choose not to be resuscitated. The difference between this and assisted suicide is the cause of death. In one scenario, you die of your illness. In the other, a lethal dose of drug. This act would allow a terminally ill person to be euthanized with depression. It would allow a terminally ill person to be euthanized because they feel a burden. By voting no to this act, it shows you truly understand the risks of such a law. And this sends a message to our lawmakers that everyone deserves protection and more compassionate care. Thank you.